I've done a lot of uh, digging on this and a lot of research and conversations with you know, the dealer I bought it from, conversations with the client I sold it to. I actually even called up Marco to get his expert opinion. Did some looking online and I think I realized what happened. This is why you should not trust what your AD tells you. One, because they don't know shit for the most part. The people that work at Rolex, and I'm sorry to have to say this, not everybody, but the majority of sales reps that work at Rolex don't know jack shit about watches. You wanna know how I know? Because they don't get to see them. The last two years you stand in and you twiddle your thumbs all day and one watch comes in, it's already pre-sold, you call your client, they come and they sell it, that's it. So I'm gonna take this watch to a watchmaker, have them check it out, and then we're actually gonna fly out to Chandler, Arizona and go visit the AD that scared my client and confront them and see what, uh, see what they can tell me about this watch. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video. ceiling i like the ceiling man it's pretty cool huh yeah well done, eh? looks really neat yeah. bella looks og That was original. I'll tell you why. Because they're single cut stones. Okay. So for sure that was original. Okay. Bezel's factory. Bezel looks good. Just just off of looking at that watch, take a a guess on the year range without seeing the card. Bezel looks good. Okay. Give me a range. 2019 plus. Okay. I also want you to do a couple things. I want you to open, when I tell you why, I want you to show, show my people why. So here's a story. <clears throat> so I bought this watch brand new. It's a 2022. It's all mm -hmm. factory. It's correct. The watch was born that way. Gets to me brand new. I send it to my client. She takes it to Rolex. Mm -hmm. Sales rep at Rolex takes a look at it, pulls his little loop out for a second, and then goes to proceeds to tell her it's a 2006, and this watch was Frankenstein put together. All these pieces were pulled off of it. Do you know where he? Where do you think he would have gotten the idea that this watch is a 2006? There's no way. Look, keep looking at it. Look at the card. That they re. They what? That they repainted over the 22. That was my no. first. That was my first thought. Can't but be. then it's a new style card. Yeah, it's new style. He told her it was a 2006 watch. Where could he? There's have... No way, because the cards changed. Right. See the serial. The cards changed. But see the see what it starts with. A Z. 2005 to 2007. But it's random. What does random mean? It can be. Right. Eight digits versus seven. It's random yeah. serial. So I think I... from what was it 2000. When they started doing the the, the rehot engrave, two thousand and twelve, they started it engraving. Well, they did it on the forty one. Well, they did it in two thousand. Uh, they started messing with it in two thousand five, and it was like official around two thousand seven, two thousand eight, when it was like in all the models. Yeah, but the thing is, you but wouldn't the, you wouldn't see this jubilee with the oyster buckle. Right. It only had the full hidden clasp. Right. And I think they only made it in two tone in mm -hmm. two tone yellow. And that's when, and that's when the they, they didn't start the random. Well, the new card was 2021, One, right? 2021, yeah. yeah. Right so that was my first, whenever they called me up and told me, so the first thought was, all right, it's a minute, it's a fake card. So I said, told them to send me pictures of the card and I sent it to a couple people and I was like, no, this is real. You can, there's no way you can fake these cards. Right. Well, and then well, my next thing was, let me see, send me a picture of the, the rehot. Mm -hmm. Is it seven or eight digits? And it's eight, which started in 2017. But then I want to do one more thing since you're my watchmaker. I want, do you have a microscope that can show the diamonds? One that can show the tabletops of the diamonds lining up? Not, you know? Nothing, nothing that your camera will catch, but okay. I mean, you can see like, um, 
I can take a couple pictures on my phone or your phone and you can see how the stones how the stones are laid out but then could you also just for the sake of this video when you get a second can you take the case back off and show me the movement make sure mm -hmm. that it's a, one, two, have the it's new a style. one two six movement not a one one six and you can tell it's the new style uh 41 system that they have on the bracelet mm -hmm. that has that little step on the end link yep so there's no way you can put it together or frankenstein it what this guy told her was that it was a 2006 was when this watch was registered, which is clearly a lie because he didn't run the serial number. Right. If he had ran the serial number, he'd know exactly when it was registered. My guess is he just looked at the Z, saw that, he either looked it up or maybe he knew that Z serial was 2006 and he just blurted that out, but he was wrong. I, had, he said, a, I had a situation with something like that with a, with a green Daytona, a yellow gold Daytona, mm -hmm. where they swapped the dial, mm -hmm. send it into the factory, and they said it was original. They never took it out, they never opened it, they never looped it, nothing. Just the because- The service center or the Service sales? center, service really? center, because they said that supposedly the case matched the serial number that they had in the system and the paperwork, that it was original. But I was able to tell right away. I mean, you're a watchmaker. You do this, I see this every all day, day every, every day. Every day. This guy's a sales rep, and he looked at the thing, and he said he, he could confirm that it was a dial swap and a bezel swap There's from no looking way. at it through a loop. How? Like, this has to be, okay, we'll open this. This has to be the new system. I have yeah. a couple original dials. I'll show you the difference between the old 36s, the new stuff, the old 41s, and the new stuff. Everything is different. It has to be like, a, like the old lady style, which is like a cup. You sit it right. over the movement. Okay. The old ones had little feet. It had feet that you would screw in to hold the dial in. Okay. You know, but this is all new. Okay. Let me open it up. Let me open it up and I'll bring everything sure. out uh, together. Sure. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> People. New caliber. Is there a way visually, and I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to know, I don't know, looking at the, I know the specs of it, but the look wise from the 116 to the 126, is there anything you can point out that would? A lot, a lot really of stuff, yeah. Show me. Yeah, the weight, the oscillating weight is different. These, um, these gears, okay. the purple wheels, okay. before they should be solid purple, now they're cut out. They're still purple, mm -hmm. but now they're cut out. Okay. Just the way that it's all made, like it's different. The bridge on the balance, way different. You know, there's a lot. <clears throat> the movement clamps, they're using way different movement clamps. Even the diameter of the screws for the movement clamp is different. You so you can't them. interchange any of that. Okay. Like even look, the end looks, the mm -hmm. end link of the bracelet. There's no way you can interchange this. Right. This was all made on the new stuff. You first start on the 41s. Then they started integrating on the 36s. Oh. And there's no way to interchange the dial either. Right. This is, this is a factory dial that was damaged. Okay. So this is a 41 rose gold model. This one here, if you look at the back, it's like a step. Yeah. It's all, you see all the pre-cutouts. See the step up right here. So this is okay, this is for a 41. I'll show you guys a different on. So for example, like this, look. Two women did those, same thing, right? Yeah. One of them is rose gold, which is this. But the difference of them in is one of them has a step and one of them doesn't. So this has little feet on the back. There's uh -huh. one there just place it on it. and one on the back yeah. on the other side. So you put it on top of the movement and you screw it down and that's how the dowel is held. So right there, you see those little feet and then it's a flat surface all the way around it. These, there's two of them. One right here, one right here. He's saying you just place that on the dial. On the movement. On the movement, I'm sorry. And then it screws it in from the bottom. From right? the side of the from the side of the movement. Okay. So it screws in from the side and the hell it's held in place. This is the other one. Same exact thing, just a step. So this is the old forty one, the new forty one. Same thing, factory dials. So there's no way of being able to take this dial from an older one that had feet to attach it. To uh because there's no place, case. there's no there's no you know, place for that, those cutouts to be placed. I was gonna pull the bezel out, but I don't want you guys to freak all out. It has a stamping on the back. Oh, does it really? It has, factory bezels have a stamping, they have a crown on the back. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Let's see that, I wanna learn something. Factory new. bezels have a stamp, they have a little Rolex crown and they have a coat on there. There's a, see, there's a coating here. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then there's a crown here. I can see the crown from my naked eye. Yeah. I can see the code. Here, let me see. Let me take let me see your phone. I'll take a couple pictures. Here you are. You see the UZ02 is the code. And then if we go over here, you can actually see right there. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. But there you can see the Rolex crown. And so what you're saying is that a 2006 model wouldn't, or I'm sorry, an aftermarket bezel wouldn't have would coding. not have these codes or this stamp. Mm -mm. So there you go. Cool, man. Appreciate it. Well, that's that's why you know, I'm going to go see a watch dealer also. I've got a watchmaker's professional opinion. I'm going to go see a watch dealer. Ask him the same thing also. Yeah, I mean, they shouldn't question it, you know? Tomorrow we're headed to Arizona. It's all OG. Yeah. Right away you can tell. I know. Right away you right. can tell. Like the way the cuts are. Another, another deck giveaway that I normally notice whenever, before I ever take stuff apart. Under the stone, so once they cut out the prongs to set the stone, right under where the stone is, is usually like not mirror finish, mm -hmm. but it's nicely cleaned and polished. It doesn't look all rugged and, and rough. The metal looks nice and finished. Okay. You know, like if they prepared it before the stones. Which on an aftermarket they wouldn't because of all the extra labor. Involved. I mean, you gotta, you gotta put in mind too, like all the machinery that this company has, they have state of the art cutting, milling machines. Mm -hmm. So they just click and play. Versus here, I mean, everything is still hand drilled, you know? Right. Even if you use a microscope, I mean, you can't get down to that detail mm -hmm. to make the prongs the same size, you know? Or specific openings. Yeah, so next we're gonna meet with the client and then we're gonna go see, uh, we're gonna go see the dealer. Now I can't, I'm gonna try to like take this jacket off and wear just a black shirt and hopefully they don't recognize me. Um, we're not going to be able to film inside there. Brian's going to be outside in the car filming us walk in. He's going to have a mic hooked up to me as well. I don't know. We're trying to do the best the best we can. So here we go. Key? Yeah, yeah, go. All right. Yeah. Wow. Well, been waiting for five years to do this. <laughs> you're going to have to like hand him the camera. You're going to get in his truck and you're going to film us. Keep the mic going. But yeah, just film us going in and then keep the camera rolling so you're picking up the audio. Look, I'm going on a drug grade. Darby, Darby, cue the intense music. Here we go. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm Joanne. I'm Anthony. Nice to, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Well, first off, well, I came because I'm sorry you had to experience that. That's absolute, excuse my word language, bullshit. Okay. So let's go on. So what I want you to do is, actually, you carry this. Um, just find the sales guy that yeah. helped you and then I'll take it from there and say, Hey, do you remember me? And you know, I was talking about this watch. I'm just gonna say, Hey, I, and I'll kind of take it from there and I'll just say, Hey, look, I was helping my friend source yeah. this watch and I thought I got a really good deal, yeah. but apparently I missed something. So can you help me understand? Okay. Um, how are you? Good. Good to see you. You know right, man? Yeah. After you guys. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Nice. It's a gorgeous store. Good. Hey. Remember me? Yes. From last time? Yes. How are so you? I came with my friend to help me, my husband, get this watch. So I helped her find this watch and thought I got a good deal. And apparently I didn't. So she was saying that the watch was registered from 2006. It and is that, a 2006 watch. It is? Okay. And it's a it's not a factory bezel. And an, or a factory dial. Okay. I don't know about the inside. We didn't open the inside. But definitely the dial and the bezel are not original. How can you tell? I just sold a lot of watches. Really? Yeah. You can see, especially on this specifically, if you look at the print on the dial itself, okay. it's stamped on there. Okay. And it's not even. The second would be is they don't set diamonds on any watch or ever have in the manner that those are set on that dial. What what manner is that? I'm just trying to understand. So the I don't bezel make that's again. underneath of the diamond that sets the diamond on top of it. Okay. That is not a Rolex way that they attach those. These diamonds are way too big for this model, and that's how I knew they <laughs> never made this piece with this bezel on it ever. It would have originally had uh, a fluted bezel on it which is the rolled gold. Okay. It would have been rose gold, but it wouldn't have had this bezel. Very common for people to take those off and to put aftermarket parts on it. 
Okay. Um, and there are certainly people who buy these, sell these, trade these every day of the week to us because we're an authorized service center. Okay. Um, I cannot take anything that has anything on it. So Rolex wouldn't put a factory bezel on that exact model watch? Like if you bought it from Rolex, well, it wouldn't come like that? You can that way from Rolex? No. Mm -mm. It oh. never came that way. So you have to go back to the model number, which we had. Okay. Um, that's how I knew it was a 2006. The serial number okay. is a giveaway on this one because the serials on the inside of the bezel, they don't do it anymore, but it starts with, this one starts with the letter Z. They stopped doing it in this manner okay. because secondary people figured out how they were uh, dating them. Okay. So when they sold something that wasn't all original, then they would date it with that mark on it. So if you look online and date it to yeah. Z, that's okay. 2006. That immediately told me what model, what dials and bezels. So even if you have a 2006 and the dial had been or the bezel had been Rolex from say 2010, it's still not Rolex. It only has to be within the time frame that that watch was built and what was available in that time frame. Doesn't mean it's not Rolex. It's not Rolex to Rolex okay. <laughs> or to me because I'm a service center. So I have to follow every, every rule there is. So she paid $22,000 for that? Yes. I, I don't know what you paid, but it's beautiful. 22. So it's not worth that? I don't know. It's what's she, worth what somebody saying that you had said that you thought it was worth like 15,000. If you had an original dial, like if it was available, there's no watch for 25,000 in this model. You'd have to have a mother of pearl dial with a, uh, a diamond bezel and a diamond dial on there. Okay. The bezel alone, if it was Rolex, is 6,000. The dial, if it's mother of pearl, is about four. So this watch without those on there is about 12 to 14, depends on what year you, you purchased it. If it were 2006. Yeah, okay. and That's... I didn't go look up what the price points were. It was okay. definitely less than in today's market. Okay. The last three years, people have been trading them and trading them and trading them and that's why rolex narrowed down what was rolex and what wasn't so got it. does that mean that they're not going to go back at some point and expand because it used to be if you just had two parts three parts mm -hmm. um say five years ago you walked in and i said oh that's not the right dial or the right bezel i could take those off hand them to you and i could put the originals on but they don't do that anymore. if you took it to any jeweler besides me or then anybody would work on it or anybody would size it. Right. It's just because we're, well, especially me, because I'm a service center, they're not. But. So you're a service center, I mean, you have got, you've got a watchmaker here, right? Yes, we do. But a watchmaker didn't pull any of this apart and verify any of that? That was just off of what you, you know. 25 years of selling the Rolex. 25 years, damn. So I guess the lesson is don't buy secondary market, right? We see, I mean, her husband's was all, Right. Okay. He's, he's the Rolex um, liaison, so he's the one who works between us and Rolex. So, it's your first today? impression. <clears throat> for us, it's just easy. Right. Like we just see them all the time, so it's easier for us personally. Mm -hmm. The average person walking up and down the street would have no clue. Right. I got you. Well, apparently, I missed it. Um, I mean, I can show it to the watchmaker real quick. Ah, uh, you can save the time. I actually know a lot more about that watch than you do. I've been selling watches measly five years, but I can tell you that first mistake you made was you looked at the Z and you Googled Z and you know that it's a 2006, but it could actually be a 2005 through a 2007. Late 2005 to early 2007. Correct, I just narrowed the middle. Exactly, but that's wrong. It's also an eight digit serial number. Okay. Do you know when Rolex started doing eight digit serial numbers? 2000 later than that? 2017. So, they started would you like they started, to open it and have the watchmaker tell you that that's not the right dial and, or bezel? I would love that, but let me finish because your watchmaker will verify everything I'm about to tell you. When he pulls that dial off, he's going to know that it's real. When he pulls that bezel off, there's a Rolex crown and a four digit stamp that only Rolex does. Correct. I also want him to open the movement up. I didn't Exactly. You looked up the Z serial and you knew that it was from 2006. But what you didn't recognize was that a 2006 watch would be a seven digit serial number, not an eight digit serial number. 
First of all, they I also had it in my hand like two seconds, and I did I did size it for you, did I not? But in two seconds, you told her that it was a fact, it was a fake dial, it was a fake bezel, and it was a 2006 watch. I, I apologize also if you they feel they also, that I. I, I offered to hand it to the watchmaker and have him authenticate it. I just want to tell a couple more things. Okay. Rolex also didn't make that clasp in 2006. It would have been a hidden clasp, which is a full Jubilee bracelet. It's an eight digit serial, which didn't start till 2017. So once the watchmaker opens that movement up, he'll be able to verify that's a 126 movement, not a 116. And then he can also find the crown stamping and the four digit clasp code underneath the bezel. Okay. So the, my last question is, <laughs> If this were, where's that warranty card? If this were a 2006. Oh, you handed it. Then. I didn't see the card, by the way. Okay. Well, I didn't see were, anything other than the watch. So Rolex didn't start doing these cards until 2021. Correct, much later. Which would mean that this is a fake card. I have no clue, I didn't see it. It doesn't look fake to me, personally. Because I didn't, I didn't bring the case in. I oh, just okay, just the, the watch. The other, the other big thing is, is you had said that Rolex doesn't make it that way, but if you go on Rolex's website right now, it's 21,150. 21, I'm not denying that it's not made that way. My problem with this is, I'm a secondary market dealer, and I do a lot of this stuff. And I see, I, I'm not saying you I didn't. See a lot I offered to tell her that I would take it and let him do it. She didn't want to do that, and her husband did. This is one of my best friends. I wouldn't want to either after being embarrassed. I, like that. I wasn't trying to embarrass her at any means. I was very nice to you, man. No, no, no. No, you are, but just after being told it's a fake watch. I did not say, I never it's said it was like fake. It's the dial and so, that's what I was texting. I just so said that I don't to you. remember. And I'm not trying to argue by any means. Yeah. My exact words were by sight, it doesn't look right. I said, we certainly have an authorized Rolex technician. And he can tell you, you said you wanted it size. Your husband came and asked me, and I said, I can give it to the Rolex person. He will open it. I do not open watches. I only sell them for the last 25 years. So my question is, well, here's my question. If you have a- And I wasn't disrespectful. You, no, you're not. No, I, I didn't said say you're, that. I never it's said you're disrespectful. That I, I, I said you gave bad information, which makes me look bad, which makes him look bad, because he came to me to source this watch for her. And when she's getting told it's a fake watch on a bunch of never misinformation- Okay. Never used to work fake, man. Not, I said, not new and not with the correct bezel. Or I said right. what I would do would be... But you did, but you did just tell me that you can tell that that's not a factory bezel. But I can tell you, in fact, it is. As I said, I will give it to the watchmaker. I don't take watches apart. I just won't work on it. So, so my question, so that, so that brings me back to the question is, if you don't take watches apart and you didn't pull the movement off that watch, how can you validly tell her that's, a fake, that's an aftermarket bezel? Oh, yeah. and, and a big concern for her is she just bought a new watch and she's being told that you guys can't service it like her warranty. I said order. unless she let me let the, uh, the watchmaker once again. I, I said that at least three I times. Don't, I don't remember because and then I And then your husband came and I said the exact it. same thing. I told your husband when he came in, I said, I will take your watch in and I will give it to him. I was not trying to guess. Was yeah, she was texting me. I was me texting because I said, I, do, I want the exact word so that I can, because I paid a lot of money for it. You did. You and you said, did. it's not original basil and diamond. Whatever diamond dial is not original. And Someone for, hacked. For 2006. And you said, if needs service, the dealer will not take it. And you said, make sure the Unless water, because you said, if the water, lot. if the water touches, then it will. Correct. And I freaked out and I if said, the bezel it's, is it's, not correct. Yeah. You cannot get it wet. You Which left. is very true. But if I left, when you left, I said, if you would like me to have him open it, I will have him open it and tell you what these are. I said, that's what I said. And when your husband came right back, he brought me his watch. I said, this watch is fine. He said, no, I want you to open it. I said, that's fine. I said, do you have your wife's watch? No, you do not have your wife's watch. I cannot tell you what that is. I offered to open it at no charge to her. The point is that you didn't, and that you spouted off that it was a 2006 without even knowing how to read a serial number. You Googled the number. You didn't know the difference between a seven digit and an eight digit this serial number. This conversation was probably three minutes, literally, and at most, sir. So I and do apologize I for upsetting at the, you. I can look at the watch in two seconds and tell you this is not a 2006 watch. They didn't make this bracelet. Class. They didn't make these end links in 2006. I, they didn't make this clasp in 2006. And to sit here and tell me that Rolex does not put this bezel and this dial on this watch is ridiculous. Would, it's on their website. This, this, this like dial came out three years ago. Uh, we're not getting any further here. I no, I proved my it, point. We make no money on her, him opening it up for free. There's I didn't, no cost to I know, that. I'm not I trying to get that. any money. I know that, but why would you, if you have a watchmaker back there, why would you tell them all this information 
without being factual. You told her it's not a factory bezel, and you still just told me to my face it's not a factory bezel I by looking at it through a loop. And I said, you I can't... don't know unless you... I told her. I did not tell you. You guys jumped me. You literally jumped me. I'm asking questions. I'm a watch customer. If I just brought this watch into you as it was her, and you just told me, like you told her, you just pulled your loop out right here and put it to the watch and looked at some stuff, don't even know what you're looking at, and told me this was a, not a factory bezel. If you look at those through a, through a loop, you can see that the tabletops actually do line up in a circular pattern. And then when you actually pull the dial or pull the bezel off, it has the Rolex clasp and has a four digit code. That's, and if you go that, through Rolex, not really, you can look at the watches on there. So that watch is that. Is that do what? I already pulled, I got videos on my phone. I already pulled the whole thing apart. Trust me, I've already done my homework. Whole thing. Hey, thank you for your time. If you want him to open it up, he can. I'll show you. I'll go show you videos yeah, no of it. No problem. It's, I just, you know, you know, I just wanted you went to. to Beverly Hills and had it completed. Yeah. The park and everything's video recorded to show yeah. you everything. But if you want to. No. I'm sure. Yeah. And it's just I that, have you tools know. I can size it for you. Yeah. I can size it. Yeah. Dude. Oh my God. I had a boner in there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My heart was like. I, I, he told you exactly the same thing he told her the other day. Yeah. So and he was, dude. He was if so you happy. Any better, you would think that you got completely ripped off. He was so happy telling me that okay, stuff too. That. Oh really? Dude, you you could see like the joy in his face when he was schooling me, and he even uh, made the comment. He was like, "I've been doing this 25 years." years. Yeah, well, I was like, I let him know I've only been doing it a measly five years. He said Rolex never put that diamond on that watch. You can't buy it. It's clearly fake. The print on the is fake, and the diamonds are fake. He said that. Yeah. Do me a favor, real quick. I don't have my thing, so hold that yep. just like that. This is not the uh, luxurious way to do this. Normally, I have gloves on. I'm sitting at my desk, and I take that back. I actually sized a Batman for Cam Hayward once with a paperclip. Oh, I, shit, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? The best part was when he went and got another guy in the store and said, this is our our, oh, our Rolex guru, our liaison. And that guy looked at the watch and knew that it was real yeah. and was trying not to call him out in front no of him. Way. And he just didn't say nothing. He just handed the watch back because <laughs> he knew the guy was full of shit. And he, he didn't tell me about... He didn't tell you there was a watch. Well, he didn't tell me there was a watch maker. I would have loved to listen because already I was picking and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, fake. because you would have said, yes, please have him look at yeah. it. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He wanted to sound smart. Yep. The, the correct thing to do would have been, look, here's what I suspect with this watch, but I want to show you why. Yeah. We have a watchmaker in the back. If you don't mind, give me, yeah. give me five minutes. You know, I'll have my watchmaker yeah. take it apart and bring it out here and let him explain it to you because he's actually the yeah. professional. Once again, I am sizing expensive watches in a parking lot, but we are making do with what we have. Damn, I wish you had a video, bro. He literally pulled the watch. He pulled his loop out as soon as I handed it to him. And I was like, I'm afraid I was told that this bezel's fake. He pulled his loop out. Yep, 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 yep. No and I was like, damn. That's when he said that he knows that it's fake. And Anthony goes, well, how do you know? And he goes, 25 years of selling Rolex. <laughs> what the? And he goes, I know that they never made this bezel. I know that they didn't put these diamonds on this. Wow. Yeah, he started... How come you're not wearing a Rolex yourself? Yeah. Uh, Which one is that one? Richard Mill. Huh? That's a Richard Mill. That's wow. a $400,000 watch. <laughs>